Hi, in this session I'm going to cover the intersection operator. The intersection operator, what it does is it gives back a reference to a cell based on the intersection of two other references. So for example, let's say we have a table here and maybe these are sales figures from January to June for 10 items. And we want to know based in April what was the sales for item 5. So based on this reference here for this column and this reference here for this column, what is the intersection of that? And that's going to be 678. And so what the intersection operator does is it gives you that value. There's a couple ways that we can do it here. Uh, I'll show you one example. And that's going to be just using the column references. So if I just clicked on the column reference here in April and then put a space bar, which is the intersection operator, such as a plus or a multiplication sign, but in this case it's just a space, and then I reference item 5 here and if I press enter it's going to give me 678 which is this value. Now we can also reference named cell ranges. So what I've done here is I've named these range of cells. So for this first for this column here, this January column from B2 to B11 I've called this January and the same for the other columns. This is February and all the way up to June. right? And also for the rows based on the row, the, the ranges from B2 to G, G2, um, I've also called this item 1. And you can see for this particular row, the last one here, this is going to be item 10. So we've given names for these ranges. And you can also use those names uh, with the intersection operator to give back that value. So for example, if I put equal and I put April, and once I kind of typed it out, Excel will show, you me, show me this this tag for it. And if I press space and put item, item, I can just type IT, it, it gives me the list of the named ranges. So item item 5 was the one that we were looking at. Well, let's try item 10. Let's do item 10. That should be 703. So if we click on item 10 and, and double click that to select it and press enter, you can see now it's come back with 703. And that's the way to do it with named ranges. Now we can also do it where you know we can just do the selection. So I've created a data validation here and I can just select an item and put it there. And so if we were to do it that way where instead of typing it you just wanted to kind of select it, we would actually have to do something called an indirect. And so I would type equal indirect. The indirect function gives you back, it returns the reference specified by a text string. So this is a text string and we really can't put, when we have a drop down here we really can't put the name uh, it doesn't allow us to do that, but the way to get around that is using the indirect function. So what happens is it's going to give us an indirect of this value here. So if I type, let me go ahead and double click that. If I do the indirect of this cell, and then whatever selected there, it's going to it's going to reference back June, and then June's going to reference that named range. And then I have to do the space here and the same thing. So I just kind of do another indirect here, and I click on that, and I click on this cell, which is C17 and then close the parentheses, press enter and you see now it's giving me 58. So if I go to June and go to item 3, we have 58. So there's three ways we can do that. So example one is pretty self-explanatory. We just select the, the column range and the row range. But example two and three probably need a little bit more explanation. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sheet here and I'll just do July to December and items, maybe items 11 to 20. So let's go ahead and do July. I'll just type in July and then I can just control enter. It'll stay in that cell. I'm going to right mouse click and bring it over. So what it's going to do, it's going to uh, bring up the other months and Excel is pretty smart in where it will fill the series down. Fill from July to December and I'll do item, I'll start with item 11. Control enter and then right mouse click and bring it down. We're going to go to 20 items. Let's go ahead and fill the series here. Let's put some dummy data here. I'm going to go ahead and select this range and type equal random random between. So just select a random number between 10 and 1,000. Let's do 1,000. And then press Control Enter. Once I press Control Enter, it will calculate this particular function for all the cells here. All right. And then since these are changing values now, if I select calculate now, it will kind of change constantly. So I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and select this back. Select this range. Control C to copy, go back to home and just paste those values so they don't, they don't change again. So it's just going to paste the values in there now. There's the func that formula is not there. So let's go back to, let me go ahead and just kind of format this out so it looks a little bit more 
easier to read. All right, and go ahead and give this some style here. All right, give this a purple style instead. All right, so we're going to go to example two. All right, example two was where we had our name ranges. So how we can select a create name ranges is we can select our table, select our table here. Now our table has the header fields for the columns and also some header fields for the rows. So once this is selected, I can go ahead and just go to formulas and create select create from selection. You can also press the keyboard shortcut Control Shift F3, and it will come come up with a dialog box where it will create names from the top row and also from the left column. So once I click OK, you see that nothing really happened. But if we go into the name manager here, you, you're going to see some name references for July and December. All right. So let's just go. Well, let's see. We have December. We have December here. So it sees December. That's 30. 839, the last number is 637. So that's how we see the name manager. But we can also select the cells here, and you can see that's picked up for July, and even like item 20, that's picked up for item 20. So that's how we create those name ranges. So here I can just use the equal sign and just type uh, July. You can see that it's picked it out here, space bar, let's say for item 20, let's say, let me give me, give me item 15 in July. So I just just type item 15 or select that, so double click that and press enter and you'll see that it's picked up 608. So how did I do the other the other one with the drop down? So let me go ahead and go to example 3. Right? So example 3 was the drop down. So the drop down is basically a validation list. Let me go ahead and just format this, make it the same. So what I can do here now is Go under the data validation, go under data, do the data validation, click on that. And what I want to do is have a list. So I want to have a list of value. And I want my source, let's just say that this will be my column, my column headers right now. So I'm just going to select this range of cells, press enter. And now this drop down has those list of cells there, right? And this other one, let's say this one is the row. So I'm going to go ahead and click on data validation. And now I'm going to do the list, and I'm going to select these rows here. Oops, let me go into the source here. Select these rows here. OK, press OK. And now this is where I use my indirect function, right? I'll, I'll, put, I'll, put, it over, I'll put it over here under example 3 instead. And I can just type indirect, click that, and then reference that cell, close parentheses, and then I type indirect again. Uh, let me see. I'll go ahead and double click that. And then reference this cell, close parentheses, control enter to stay in that cell. And you can see nothing has happened because there's nothing selected here. So if I select something like December, I want the uh, December item 15 in December, which is 507. I'll select December and select five, the uh, item 15, and that should bring back 507. So there's a couple ways where we can use the intersection operator to do a lookup. Now this is actually would be a two-way lookup since we're looking up from the column here, we're looking up from the row here, and this is kind of a handy little tool where you don't really have to use a VLOOKUP. If you want to do something really quick and easy, you can just select the columns here like we did in example one, or you can build out name ranges and use these type of techniques to do that. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.